Good morning. And welcome to all, both here who are worshiping in person and those who are joining us online as we gather to observe Thanksgiving Sunday, a day when we offer praise and thanksgiving to God for all the ways that God provides for us and cares for us. I'd like to extend a special welcome as well to Avita on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Please fill out the fellowship pads so that we might better respond to needs of those who are in attendance this morning and so that we might follow up with those who are visitors among us. I want to express thanks for the beautiful flowers which beautify our sanctuary on this Thanksgiving Sunday. My thanks to the worship team which coordinates these services and thanks to the musicians who enhance our time together. Our liturgist this morning is Abraham, also known as A.J. Medrano. Uh, the ushered list is on uh, the back of the uh, uh, back wall of the church of the sanctuary as you're leaving this this morning. Uh, all are welcome to Coffee Fellowship uh, following this morning's service. Uh, I would like to remind everyone that there is now a prayer book at the entrance of the church for those who would like to include prayer requests during the joys and concerns. I'd like to express thanks to Kathy Goodwin, uh, Judy Ryan, and Julie Johnson, who were able to put together three bulletins, count them three bulletins, this, today's, next Sunday, and this afternoon's service, and an annual report, all in one week. So thanks to the three of them for making that possible. It's that time of year again. You are invited to take a Christmas angel tag hanging here in front of the church. You are asked that if you take a tag to please let Kathy or Judy know which tag you have taken. Um, you are all invited to join us for a community Thanksgiving service here at the Congregational Church of Wells at three o'clock this afternoon, sponsored by the Wells Area Clergy Association. The diaconate will be offering refreshments after the service. The diaconate will also be distributing Thanksgiving baskets this afternoon. So the diaconate are going to be very busy, and when you see them run by, don't get in the way. <laughs> um, and just a, just a word that, uh, as you may know, the uh, Wells Area Clergy Association is a new creation this past year. It grew from a survey that Reverend Debbie Ennis uh, took of community leaders in, in the of Wells area and uh, contacted me as part of that survey. And we had a, a long and fruitful conversation and one of the things that we thought would be uh, helpful to the community would be to start a Wells area uh, clergy association, which now meets just about every month. And we've already uh, accomplished a number of things. We had a prayer vigil for Ukraine uh, earlier in the year. We did a uh, service of remembrance for those who had lost loved ones during the pandemic. And now we're doing this service this afternoon, uh, Thanksgiving, community Thanksgiving service. So I'm thankful that we're able to form a clergy group that uh, seeks to meet the needs of the Wells uh, area community uh, and to deal with spe specific issues that we face as a community. Um, so, uh, I uh, hope you can all join us. Following our service this morning, we will gather for our annual meeting. Um, just to make you aware that that's happening, uh, you can go grab a cup of coffee, maybe grab a donut, and we'll come back for the annual meeting. Um, I'm, I'm uh, sure it will be a fruitful time. And uh, Peter Masucci has given me an update, um, a stewardship update after last Sunday, Stewardship Sunday, we now have 48 pledges, which I think is the same number as last year, right? Uh, so we have 48 pledges with a total of $84,000 pledge, which is, is good, but we still need to do more, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So um, my thanks to those who have already pledged, and if you have not yet pledged or are interested in do so, uh, uh, speak to Peter after the service. I'm sure he'll be glad to get a packet to you. Uh, I think that's all we need to do for announcements, so let us join in uh, the passing of the peace. And again, uh, wave, uh, bow, elbow, or fist bump, or just say peace. So let's pass the peace of God to one another.
So let's join in for a moment, uh, uh, time for the child in all of us. How many of you have seen some production of Godspell? I, hey, all right, all right. Um, well, uh, in Godspell, uh, our church I served, a previous church I served, did a um, production of Godspell several years ago, and, and uh, it was very moving and went very well, and it still is something that's near and dear to my heart. Well, in that, in that um, production, there's a hymn that, um, uh, I don't know if it's in this hymn, but it's in the other hymn books that I've, I've uh, seen called, We Plow the Fields and Scatter. Good seeds on the I'm sorry? Good seeds on See that? See that? He's helping me with my, with my message. That's, uh, he did last week, too. <laughs> um, so anyways, there's a line that says, We plow the fields and scatter, the good seed on the land, but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. So in, in keeping with that theme, I brought a bag of apples. How many of you have gone apple picking or have, um, you know, gotten apples at the store or maybe had apple pie or apple crisps or, you know, this is the season for apples. So, um, um, Deb made an apple pie with these apples and it was really good and thinking that maybe it would be good to do another one at some point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, as you, as you look at an apple, you say, wow. These are great. They taste delicious, and they taste even better when they're cooked. Where do apples come from? Apples come from trees. We pick them off from trees, or they fall on the ground. But how do the trees make them? Well, the soil uh, enables the tree to make the apples. But where does the soil come from? And if you keep going back and back and back, you realize that in the end, these apples and all the other good gifts that that him talks about come from God. So as we think about apples and all the things that we're going to enjoy on Thanksgiving Day, let us give thanks to God for all that God gives us and provides for us. Please join us for the call to worship. Come, let us celebrate the wondrous gifts that God has given us. Praise be to God who provides for us. Please stand and join us in the opening hymn, number 40, For the Beauty of Earth. For the beauty.
Please join, join me for the opening prayer. Lord of bounty and blessing, we come to you this day in gratitude for all that we have been giving. We are grateful for the blessings and for the opportunities to be of service to others in your holy name. Bless each of us here that we may become truly blessings to others. For we ask in his name. Amen. As we share in our joys and concerns, I would like to once again express my thanks to all of those who are calling or keeping in touch in various ways with members and friends of the church family. Judy Byron, the chair of our care team, has asked me to share the following joys and concerns. Reverend Nancy and Sharon ask for prayers for the family and friends of Reverend Linda, who passed away last Thursday. There will be a celebration of Linda's life on Monday. Prayers for Gloria, who has returned home after being hospitalized last week. Gloria appreciates prayers and cards from her church family. Sandy asks for continued prayers for her friends Martha and Christine. Both are dealing with various health concerns. Prayers for Jim. Continued prayers for all of those affected by Hurricanes Ian and Nicole. Many of us have family and friends who winter in Florida who live there year-round. Ongoing prayers for Mike, Reese, Bill, Gary, Annabelle, Kathy, Ted, Reverend Peter, Lyra, Lorianne, Susan, Kim, Jackie and Tommy, and Pam. We also ask for prayers for Gloria, Emily, Hope, Cindy, Marriott, Marcia and Robert, Kevin, Bobby, and Selena. It is a joy to wish our church family and friends a very happy Thanksgiving. There are many in our circle of church family and friends who continue to mourn the loss of loved ones. May they know that they are in our prayers. Every thought is a prayer and everyone is appreciated. Let us join now for our pastoral prayer. God of love and grace, we come before you this morning with gratitude for all the ways that you provide for us and sustain us throughout the year. We are thankful for all the ways that you surprise us with your loving spirit in our midst and for the ways that you help us to find a way when there seems to be no way forward. Help us to express our thanksgiving to you by sharing your love with others. God, we pray that you be with us uh, after worship as we gather for our annual meeting. We give thanks for your provision during this past year, which has been so challenging in so many ways. And we look forward in hope to the year to come as we seek to continue to discern your leading and your guiding among us. As we offer these prayers among us, we also lift up those that we name in our joys and concerns. And we ask that you offer healing, strength, encouragement, and hope to all. And now as we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also join for a moment of silence, remembering those concerns that lie deep within each one of our hearts. Let us pray. As we offer these prayers before you, God, let us also pray in the words that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 11 through 20. I pray that God's great power will, give, will make your, you strong and that you will have joy as you wait and do not give up. I pray that you will be giving thanks to the Father. He has made it so you could share the good things given to those who belong to Christ who are in the light. God took us out of a life of darkness. He has put us in the holy nation of his much-loved Son. We have been brought by his blood and made free. Our sins are forgiven through him. Christ is as God is. God cannot be seen. Christ lived before anything was made. Christ made everything in the heavens and on earth. He made everything that is seen and things that are not seen. He made all the powers of heaven. Everything was made by him and for him. Christ was before all things. All things are held together by him. Christ is the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning of all things. 
He is the first to be raised from the dead. He, he is to have first place in everything. God the Father was pleased to have everything made perfect by Christ, his Son. Everything in heaven and on earth can come to God because of Christ's death on the cross. Christ's blood has made peace. Let us join together for a word of prayer. God, we do indeed offer thanks to you for your presence among us, for your provision, for your loving, everlasting care. Be with us now as we reflect upon your word, as we give thanks to you for all that you do for us. We pray this in Christ's name, amen. The first verse of our passage in the letter to the Colossians sets the stage for today's observance of Thanksgiving Sunday. In that letter, we heard these words, may you be made strong with the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. The Thanksgiving holiday has its roots in a harvest meal shared by pilgrims, our spiritual ancestors, and Native Americans in 1621 in Plymouth Colony, in what is now uh, Massachusetts. It's interesting to note, by the way, that uh, that first Thanksgiving meal was held about 21 years before the founding of Wells. Give you a sense of, of the uh, age of our own community as well. The United Church of Christ traces its heritage to those pilgrims who created a new colony in the new world in the name of religious freedom. You might say that the holiday we celebrate this coming weekend is our denomination's gift and legacy to the entire nation. So let's take a moment to remind ourselves of the events surrounding that first Thanksgiving meal. A religious group known as the Separatists broke away from the Church of England in the late 1500s because they felt that there was a need for further reformation of the established church. These Separatists first settled in Holland for a while to avoid persecution in England, but they did not stay long. They were finding it difficult to find work, and their children were being assimilated into an unfamiliar culture with a foreign language. Another option began to emerge for these people of faith, to establish a colony in the new world based on the beliefs that gathered them together. This was the course that these 102 hardy souls cho chose as they embarked on the Mayflower on September 6th in 1620, girded by the words of encouragement from their pastor, Reverend John Robinson, words that are remembered in the hymn, We Limit Not the Truth of God. In that hymn are contained these words, We limit not the truth of God to our poor reach of mind by notions of our day and sect, crude, partial, and confined. No, let a new and better hope within our hearts be stirred. The Lord hath yet more light and truth to break forth from his word. After landing on the shores of Plymouth on November 21st, 1620, the colonists suffered a devastating winter. 
Of the 102 people who reached the new colony that first winter, only 54 survived to see the first buds of the new spring. But spring brought new hope, not only in the form of milder weather, but also in the form of much needed help from Native Americans in the region who taught the colonists essential survival skills. In particular, a man by the name Esquanto, who had learned English during a stay in England, was especially helpful. The colonists were profoundly thankful for this unexpected assistance, which they saw as an illustration of God's provision. As a way of expressing their thanks, the pilgrims held a huge feast and invited the Native Americans to join in the celebration. This was the first Thanksgiving in the New World, and it was hosted by direct ancestors of our particular religious tradition. This is a very special weekend, both for our nation and indeed for our congregation. As a way of appreciating, at least in a small part, what that first Thanksgiving was like, I'd like to share with you two firsthand accounts of the experience, one from a pilgrim woman and the other from a Native American boy. The pilgrim wo woman writes, my name is Priscilla. I have awakened before the sunrise as usual, knowing that the day's endless chores await me. But even though our existence here is hard, I feel that it is a great favor from God, not only that I survived our great passage here a year ago, but also that in spite of the hardships here in Plymouth, I still have so much contentedness. I have never wished in my heart that I had not come into this country or that I were back again in my father's home. My husband and I seldom speak anymore of the first days on these shores. There was so little food, and we had such scanty clothing. So many of our numbers suffered from colds and were sick from exposure. Only four months from landing, we had dug 44 graves and were doubly frightened lest the keen-eyed and hostile Indians might learn how we decreased in number and were very weak. But I will not look back. Today we have found peace with these nearby Indians, and I do not fear walking through the forest. We've started a beaver trade, and there has been no sickness for months. Eleven buildings have been erected, and we've seen our first harvest. Sadly, our wheat, barley, and peas have come to nothing. But thanks to Squanto, our 20 acres of corn have done well enough. And today we give grateful thanks. Massasoit soon arrives with perhaps 100 natives. The children are gleeful. There is great bounty for our feast. Those like myself who have survived will tell this story to our children. I will never forget, for we nearly died. But in the retelling and in future years of abundance, others will forget. When men own a great deal, they often change. If future generations do hear of us, I wonder what they will remember. And then the Native American boy uh, also offered a testimony of that day. I am running bare and my people and I are proud to be bringing broiled venison and cornmeal to the strangers for that, the feast today. I remember my first look at them. I had never seen a man who was white before. All I knew were stories my father told us as we lay in our hut around the fire. He spoke of the great sailing ships which brought them to the shore and told us that they had heavy beards and wore too much clothing. He was right. Their clothing is complicated and funny. Why do these people wear more than they need to? No one asks, but I also wonder, why have they come? Maybe they burned all the firewood in their previous land and they have come to live where there is more. There is so much abundance here, fish and berries, fruit and vegetables. We have shown them how to catch fish and lobster and how to corner herds of deer. They have traded tools for our skins and furs. The bounty belongs to the land which I love. It is part of my mother, the earth, and she is both kindly and harsh. 
Some neighboring tribes still do not trust the newcomers. They believe that they will eventually steal from us, as others have done. But I do not agree. Whoever they are, why would they take by force what they can obtain by love? Why would they destroy us who supply them with food and give them knowledge of the ways to plant it? No, there is enough for all, and there is peace between us. And today will be a fine celebration. The letter to the Colossians encourages the faithful to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father. That's what our spiritual forebears did. They endured everything while at the same time giving thanks for God's provision and for the help of Native Americans who helped these early colonists to survive. One of the messages of this holiday is that God does indeed provide for our needs, sometimes in unexpected ways and from unexpected sources. As we have seen, God sent Squanto, a man who was very different from the colonists, to help them survive the challenges that they faced. As we continue our Thanksgiving celebrations, let us keep our eyes open for the many unexpected ways that God provides for our needs as well. And now as we join in offering thanks to God for God's provision, for God's care, for God's protection throughout the past year, let us express our thanksgiving through our morning offerings. Let us join now for our prayer of dedication. As we dedicate this offering, we offer ourselves as well. 
for these gifts of money are but tokens of ourselves. Take and use us, that our hands may reach out in service, our feet may walk the difficult path of reconciliation, and that our words may be words of peace. For this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us join now in our, our closing hymn number 721, Come Ye Thankful People, Come. Beloved of God, place your whole trust in God's abundant love. Feel the powerful presence of God in your life and know that God's blessings are with you. Go in peace and may God's peace always be with you. Amen. Amen.